today, my friends. I had to bring the grow table from outside to inside because the weather just hasn't been right for it. But today, what we're going to do is talk about landcrest. Now, a lot of you follow me because I grow tropicals and subtropicals, but I also grow a lot of brassicas, and people who have been following me for a long time know that. Microgreens and baby leaf and things. And look at this. Land crest. Now, it has lots of different names. I'll leave the botanical name for it down below there. And look, this plant is wonderful in northern temperate areas. It, that's where it comes from originally. I think it comes out of England. It was eaten in Rome right up. Look, 17th century, I think they started producing this and uh, yeah, farming it. And basically, it's known mostly now as a microgreen. And you see it a lot of on YouTube and stuff like that. People have been growing this probably one of the longest microgreens ever. But this is a more mature plant. So I wanted to show it to you and give you a better look. Now, it has a really strong flavour. It is, wait for it, boom, oh man is it strong. It's got one of the strongest pepper flavours that I know. You would think it would be related to uh, watercress and stuff, but it's not. It's actually closer to brassicas. And I would say the wild brassicas, such as like a wild rocket and things like that, wild arugula. It is just an awesome plant. Now, you can grow this in partial shade in hotter climates, but it likes to be in the winter. So if you're in a hotter climate, winter time only, cooler climates all year round, lots of water. I normally fill it up to about halfway there. I've got it empty at the moment uh, because I had to come in and film and I give it a lot of liquid fertilizer. It loves it. It loves a good drink and occasionally I'll just let the water come down just a little bit so you know it's not always just flooded full of water. You've got to let it drain out every now and again and allow that oxygen back into the root system. So it's not a semi-aquatic plant. It's called land crest in a lot of places or upland crest or upper land crest. It's got so many different names. That's why I'm leaving the botanical name for you. Uh, down below. There's a few different varieties of cresses as well. Now this one is especially special because what it does is, is it actually kills cabbage moth. Now I got you thinking, haven't I? Yes, it does. Well, how it does that is the plant actually has some type of chemical in there and it attracts certain types of cabbage moth and moths and things to lay their eggs on there. And then when the larvae comes out, they eat the leaf and they die. Now, if you don't believe me, let's head over to the computer and I'll show you one of the recent articles. I found this out from a, 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 bot a botanist who's a friend of mine and he was telling me that they're looking at actually making extract out of this for caterpillar control. So if you're into natural pest controls, this may be a plant that you want to sacrifice in your garden get rid of those cabbage moth. Anyway, let's go and have a look at this article. So we're on a website called www.bag.com.au and I'll leave a link for you down below to this article and it goes over about how landcress is a natural pest control for certain moths and I'll read it out now to you. Landcress Barbaria vulgaris and Barbaria verna releases chemicals which attract the diamondback moth right and the large cabbage moth left, both small brown moths which are common pests in the veggie garden. These moths lay their eggs in the landcress. Subsequently, the emerging caterpillars feed on the landcress are poisoned by saponinins in the leaves and die. So if you hear landcress referred to as dead and trap crop, that is why. Also worth noting is landcress Barbaria verna, and it is a spicy addition to salads. Now do not confuse diamond moth and large cabbage moth with the cabbage white butterfly. Confusion of these names has led to unsubstantiated belief that landcress is a dead end crop for the cabbage white butterfly, Pieris rapae. Landcress attracts the butterfly but does not kill that caterpillar. You can use it to trap those caterpillars, then pull the plant out and bin the plant and the pests. Alternatively, you can have a nice infestation building up on your landcress. You can give it a spray with Dipel, hoping to break the pest infestation cycle 
without having to spray the veggies. So that's pretty cool, eh? It kills a few moths, but the white cabbage moth, you need to use it as an attractant and then either bin them or burn them or spray them. Now, if you've got a large cabbage moth problem and it's not solving this, then obviously netting would be the next bet or do not plant the brassicas, which attracts them. Woohoo! We have a weapon against cabbage moth, the scourge of the countryside here within Australia and right across the world. Now, as they mentioned in the article, they don't bump off the white cabbage moth. They only attract them and then you need to grab the plant, bin it, or spray it or whatever. But look, the first thing I recommend is try not to get them in your garden in the first place because once you have an infestation, it really can be a battle on your hands. And look, I'd prefer not to battle with them uh, myself, but that's my personal opinion. If you've got them just coming in everywhere, it could be a good chance for you to scale out war on your cabbage moth. But I prefer just to eat that stuff. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's so good for you. It's easy to grow, like in the spring and winter time here, and even in the autumn. It doesn't like the full on hot summer sun. But like I said in the beginning of the video, in cooler areas, you could grow it all year round. You just come out, pick a little bit, put it into an omelet, put it into a salad. Oh man, it is just absolutely stunning and it would keep those flus away because it's very high in vitamin C. I think about four times higher than an orange. And look, I just walk out and pick a couple of leaves most days and throw it in salad. Karen doesn't even notice. She goes, oh, that's a, what's that spicy bit? And then it's gone. <laughs> if you love gardening and growing food at home, then please consider subscribing to my channel because we've got plenty more videos on the way teaching you how to grow fresh food fast in urban places and small spaces. Don't forget when you subscribe to click that bell button because that way you'll stay notified each and every time a new video appears.